my father was um, used to go to the first Gracie Academy in in Rio in the uh, in the city center when it first started. That was a thousand years ago, and he used to take me there when I was a kid. So I just grew up in this environment. You know, I think he he liked it so much that he wanted to get me involved with it. So. I just got into it and I liked it and I've been doing it ever since. Because my father used to train at the academy, they had, uh, it was run by Elu Gracie, but it, it had uh, different teachers. They had Carson Gracie, Elu Vigio, and my father was a student of Jean Albert Barreto. So my first teacher was Jean Albert Barreto many, many years ago, and then I went to, because he, he closed down his academy and started doing other things related to football, psychology and football and stuff I like. So I went to study with uh, Hulse, and um, it made just, uh, it was uh, probably one of the best decisions I ever took in my life, and um, I ended up marrying his sister, and um, we were friends and uh, used to hang out together, whatever, and uh, I used to be in the academy all day long, and um, Jiu Jitsu has been everything to me. If obviously, as you get older, you start to reduce a little bit because the pressure is big. I saw the, the, the evolution of a, a martial art that a, a family you know, created and, and tried to do such a good job and um, and it got really big in Brazil and all of a sudden it just blew out worldwide and uh, it, I, we, I think that we that, that saw all this coming and upgrowing and all that, uh, we feel very proud of it, you know, because uh, it's, a, it's a very healthy lifestyle, you know, because if you want to train, if if you if you if you're doing this martial art, whatever, even if it's not on a very strong effort to compete and all that, you need to lead a, a healthier life because you're exercising and you because you're exercising, you tend to eat better. Because you're eating better, your life becomes better and your whole environment is better because everything is nicer or whatever and. And in the 80s, when we saw it, you know, the, the, the UFC, and then I was invited by Carlos Gracie to, to open an academy in Tokyo. And that was back in 97. I was probably one of the first Brazilians to teach the, the Jiu-Jitsu back to the, to the Japanese. So I was interviewed by magazines, by television and all that. And they were asking me this question. No, how do you feel coming here and now teaching us back what we taught you? and said, well, it's, it's very comforting, you know, being able to be part of this. You know, even if it's just a little bit, a little fraction of something so big that the youth and all these boys are, 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 are made the sport so well-known worldwide, and it makes me feel very proud to be a part of this, you know, and to be, to have been part of such a, a great family that the Gracie is, you know, so big and so sportive, you know. Well, basically, uh, that it started in Tokyo, so I stayed there for all that time. And um, Japan is a very difficult country to get a work permit and all that. You need such, and at that same time, I was. Uh, I had a student that said, oh, you, you have to go to England, there's nobody there, please come. Ba -da -da, ba -da -da. So I ended up in London. So I went from one island to the other. <laughs> and, well, it, I, uh, my experience in, in England was that initially, and I arrived there in 98, and when you go to a country and you're, you're trying to uh, teach something that it's completely new to them, it's very, very difficult because even though they've seen those things, because 
there's a very big difference in the UFC and the jiu-jitsu itself. UFC, pride, mixed martial arts is one thing. Jiu-jitsu is another. So if you have your gi, you walk into the academy and you want to teach jiu-jitsu and some guy that's a bouncer or whatever comes in with, with a ripped t-shirt and says, I want to spar, it, 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 it doesn't work. It's not like that at all. You know, so you, 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 to be able to be a part of, of a mixed martial arts, that's what the name is, mixed martial arts. So you, you end up learning a, a, a whole bunch of things to be able to get there. Jiu-Jitsu is a very big tool in all of this. We, we learn about this because all the other martial arts are learning Jiu-Jitsu to be able to compete with us. Huh? And um, I ended up in a country that had no knowledge whatsoever of grappling. So I ended up teaching in small cities. I used to work all day long from Sunday to Sunday to Sunday to Sunday. That was year in, year out. And um, the age is not that helpful at this t time of the year, this time of life, you know. And uh, some situations that you end up getting involved and people don't know, you end up giving a seminar for 20 guys and you arrive there, oh, where are we going to do this? Well, right here. I said, but where? There's a canvas on the floor. Well, yeah, that's where we train. I said, all right, so what do we do with the takedowns and stuff like that? Oh, don't matter. All right. Oh, you can't do that. You know, it, it, it doesn't work that way. So it took me time and a lot of effort and a lot of hard work. People sometimes don't, don't imagine what it is. You know, my son and Braulio that are there in England and other guys that are there now, they already uh, had it. I gave them everything already done. All the hard work was done. Now it's, it's yours too. Because I didn't, I didn't make one penny out of, of nothing. I'm not complaining about this. I just a second that, that, that I'm figuring now they have their own academies, they, they go give seminars, everything is more organized and all that, but till then, nothing. So it took me years to build this all up. And now, now it's there, so take it from there now. Well, we had a very uh, comfortable and uh, friendly environment between us. And uh, it was a lot of hard training. I used to train like twice a day. And uh, even when it was Saturday, Sunday, or holiday, we used to go up to Teresopolis or Petropolis, where Elis Altis with Halls, to do the same thing that we did all week. Oh, let's go t for a weekend up there. Okay, don't forget to take a geek. <laughs> so, or even if we didn't bring it, they would have a geek there for us. So. No matter what we do, no matter where we went, it was always jujitsu, 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 training, 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 and competing. But the competitions at that time were like if in, the, in a suburb in the middle of nowhere, you know. And we used to hang out, so I arrived there at 9 o'clock in the morning, zinc roof, 50 degrees in there. We used to wait till 8 o'clock at night for, for a fight, whatever. And, you know, it was the, the, the building of the structure that today is present nah? and um, it's it was so nice and um, I got involved a lot with Halls and he 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 made me what I was at the time you know I used to be a pretty good uh, player and um, I used to compete plenty I have loads of gold medals and um, it was such a a good time for all of us, you know, for all of us. It was a time oh, when I, when my one of my first competitions, we used to have an internal uh, competition in the academy to select the guys that were going to compete and represent the the Gracie Academy, because all of us were as one. Carson Gracie, Halls Gracie, Elu, was all. One bunch got together, select the guys, and put them in the championship. Later on, Carson got his team out, and then Halls did still had a, a link with Edu, but later on, each one had his own club 
represented because the students, uh, they had more students competing and all that, and things just grow up, grown. Oh, my English, that was bad. But anyway, uh, it was very interesting to be, to have that all in my head and in my heart. Roger was, when, when he was still a blue belt, you know, like 16 years old, I used to take him to England with me and he used to help me with the classes and all that. So very early, 16, 17, 18 years old, he was already uh, not taking classes, but, you know, we were there together and he was helping me in the academy and giving classes. And, and um, I, think, I think that a fighter will be always complete after he starts teaching. Why? I can do a position exactly like you can do. We can do the same thing. But because I've been doing it for a thousand times, I can, I can pick up a little mistake in that situation where sometimes you might not see it. So. What happens with the teacher? You teach that same thing over and over and over and over and again, and you see the students doing it, and that's how you start picking up things. Oh, should have done that, should have done this, that little detail here, that little detail, and these, these, these little things that starts building our uh, fighting character. So I think all of this must have uh, helped Roger a lot in his knowledge. Obviously, he had excellent teachers. And uh, Gracie Baja School, as everybody known, is one of the greatest in Rio and now spread it all over the world with representatives all over. And, um, uh, but the teaching, I think, helped him a lot, you know. He was there and um, later on he ended up uh, actually taking over the entire situation in, uh, in London, maybe two years ago or something. And um, the only thing that sometimes this uh, enables him to train more, you know, because he teaches like from, he gets in the academy 11, 12 o'clock in the morning, stays there till 10 at night, so <laughs> there's not much time left for anything else. So you got to be in between this lessons and all this, go here, train a little bit of judo, do some uh, uh, weightlifting or running, cardio, whatever, to, to build up the, 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 the fighter that, that he is now. That makes all of us very proud, not only me, I think all of us. Maybe if we can tie both of his hands and his feet, I can stand a little bit of chance, but no, no way. I try to survive sometimes. Last week we were just fooling around and he threw that little body of his on top of my leg, sprained my ankle so bad that I, it was like I had a football on my ankle taking anti-inflammatories for five days. And, ah, and there was a, this other time that we were fooling around in the living room and he got me in a wrist lock and he broke my wrist. We were just fooling around with each other. <laughs> the academy is really, really nice. And it's really, I think it was about time that the Gracie Bar established himself here in the, in the United States because basically all this job that, that Carlos Gracie has been doing over all these years with all these championships, you know, maybe some people uh, don't value this much, you know, all, but if you look into it and you look back, you see how, how long and how many hours and days and years and time has effort has been put up with all of this that has been built because without these championships, the fighters would never be known. And if they were known, who would know what jiu-jitsu is? Nah? And now that he's, he's established himself here, I think it's, uh, it's a really big, solid step. And uh, 
I hope everything really goes firmly from now, from here on. One of the first competitions I'll be able to watch, you know, Halls, Igor, Ho Roger, Gregor, Cairon, all of them competing in, in one event. And I'm really, really looking forward to that, you know, because I've seen these boys be born. When I met Halls, Hollyzine was in his mom's belly. I think it wasn't even in the belly yet. So, and now they're twice my size and really out there and, you know, well known. And just by hanging out with them and being here for these days, it's so nice, you know, it makes me feel very proud to be part of all this. And I feel very, very grateful. Very, very grateful to be alive and be able to see this, you know.